We are in day 12 of our 21 for 21. We're on the home stretch now. So if you've been with us this whole time, congrats. We are now heading towards uh, the finish line, but we are right in the middle of looking at the Lord's Prayer in, this, in the middle of this month. And today we're going to look at part of the Lord's Prayer that is really at the heartbeat of the message of Jesus. And really, it's one of the simplest parts of the Lord's Prayer and also the hardest to put into practice. The Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6, verse 12 says, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. It's really about the, the heartbeat of the message of Jesus. Why did Jesus come? It's because you look at the, the story of the Bible. It's about this humanity that was separated from God because of sin way back at the beginning. And God has been trying to rescue and save and forgive his people over and over and over again, generation after generation. And nothing really works to solve the problem that we continue to be separated from God until we see Jesus. And then we see Jesus' life and his work and his teaching here on earth that ultimately culminates in his death on the cross and his resurrection from the grave. And he says it's all about us being restored to God, forgiven of our sins, and living this new life through him. So when we talk about forgiveness, it's really at the heart of the message of Jesus. And Jesus, in this part of the Lord's Prayer, teaches us to live this forgiveness out in our own lives on a daily basis, to be people that ask for forgiveness, but also people that go about forgiving others in our own lives. If we look at the words in this verse, it says, forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. This idea of forgiveness in the original language had the idea of taking something and setting it away from oneself or, or, or releasing somebody from an obligation or, or something that they might have been owed. So this idea of forgiveness is taking something and setting it far away, releasing somebody from something. And that idea of debt is the same way we think about it in financial terms. That if you look at the balance sheet, we owe somebody something. And so when we ask God for forgiveness, it's saying, God, would you take what I owe you, what I, what I owe you, would you take it and set it away from me? Release me from that debt that I owe you. And we, we, it's the same way with other people, that we re, re, release people from the debts that they owe us. That, God, that person did something to me, and I've been holding it against them, but I want to release them from that. God, that person said something about me, and I've been holding it against them. They're, they owe me because of what they did or what they said, but I want to release them from that. When we talk about forgiving others and being forgiven ourselves, it has this idea of being released, clearing the ledger, the balance sheet, if you will, in our own lives. And it starts with us asking God for forgiveness, but there's this critical conjunction as in there. It says, God, would you forgive us as we forgive others? And that might not seem like a big deal, but it ties the whole thing together because that as is setting up a comparison between the way that we ask God for forgiveness and the way that we forgive other people. In some way, it's like saying, God, we're going to set the standard of the way that we're going to forgive other people in our lives, and we want you to use that same standard according to us and the way you treat us. God, the way we deal with other people, we want you to deal with us in a similar way. And that's the terrifying part of this part of the Lord's Prayer, is that we set the tone and the pace for forgiveness in our own lives. We can't be people that ask God for forgiveness, but then also refuse to forgive other people in our own lives because of this conjunction as in there. Forgive us our debts as, in the same way, like we forgive other people. Because if we're not forgiving other people, then how can God do similarly for us in our own lives? We set the standard and God follows our lead in this. It's a terrifying thing. It's kind of a scary thing. Unless we forgive others, how can God forgive us 
if Jesus is setting up this standard that says, as you've been forgiven, also forgive others. How can God give us something that we might be unwilling to give other people in our lives? We can't have it both ways. We can't be forgiven by God and then also go about with unforgiveness towards others in our own lives. If we want to be forgiven by God, we need to grow into becoming people of forgiveness. And I know that really hits at the heart of some of the hardest issues we face here on earth in our relationships because some of the hurt and the pain that we've been hanging on to seems like it might be impossible to forgive in our lifetimes. But you think about what Jesus did on the cross and the pain that he took on and the way that he forgave us of such a great debt that we owed him, that he offered us life eternal because of the way that he forgave us. With his help and with this prayer, we can become people who forgive others in our own lives. Do you want to be more like Jesus? Then become a great forgiver in your own life. Jesus forgave so much, and we, he can also help us become people who forgive others in our lives. The truth is that we are never more like Jesus than when we forgive others who have sinned against us. We're never more like Jesus than when we forgive others who have sinned against us because Jesus had no sin. He had never sinned, and yet he forgave all of humanity and all of their sins, and we become more like him when we follow in his leading. So here's what I want to ask you to do today. This part of the Lord's Prayer is simple, yet profoundly difficult in some ways in our own lives. I want to ask you to read the very next verses after the Lord's Prayer. You can find them in Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. And they talk about the way that we can go about being people of forgiveness, the importance of forgiveness in our own lives. I don't want to share them with you. I don't want to ruin the surprise for you. But would you just take a second to go to Matthew chapter 6 and read verses 14 and 15 and see what Jesus taught us again about the importance of of forgiveness and living that out in our own lives. And then I want to ask you just to take a minute to reflect on your own life and ask some questions of yourself. Maybe you want to just do this in the quietness of your heart or in your own mind. Maybe you want to get out a journal and write some things down. Maybe you can get your phone out and take some notes. But I just want you to think about these questions before you take some time to pray today and throughout the day. The first question is, uh, what do you need to ask God forgiveness for in your own life? What do you need to ask God for forgiveness for in your own life? And the second question is, what do you need to forgive others for in your own life? Who do you need to forgive? Just take a minute and write those things down. And you can take as long as you want. Some of this stuff might be really hard to work through. And then we can really make this section of the Lord's Prayer so simple. And you can pray this prayer now, but you can pray it throughout your day. We don't have to recite the Lord's Prayer as is. The gist of it is a prayer that goes something like this. Lord, forgive me and help me forgive others. Lord, forgive me and help me forgive others. Lord, forgive me and help me forgive others. So once you read Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, Take some time to ask yourself those questions today. What do I need to ask God for forgiveness for and who do I need to forgive? And then t take some time and then just pray this simple prayer right now and throughout your day. God, forgive me and help me forgive others.